Welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you live from beautiful Hungary here in the Carpathian Basin of Europe. I hope everybody has had a great week. Hi, Shamil. Hi, Kamal. Hi, Salehabanu. Nice to see many students in the class. In this class, we are looking at a task to writing a question. It will be one of those ones where you have to discuss both sides and choose the one that you support. While we wait for some more of your peers, this class is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS preparation. Check us out there. And for the general version of the exam, do check us out at gielteshelp.com. That's general ieltshelp.com. On both of these websites, we have loads of materials for you, and you can use the coupon code R4TYJ to save yourself uh, 20% from the full course price. Bumi, Roshni, nice to see our members in the class as well. Welcome. Uh, again, this is what our websites look like. This is the academic one here with the blue background. Click that big red button to join the premium package. And this is our general IELTS site here with the green background. Click that big red button to join us there. Again, you can use that code that I just gave you to get a 20% discount. Of course, our websites are fully responsive and integrated with our apps. So if you join us at aehelp.com, also get the app for your mobile, Academic IELTS Help, and you can link these two accounts. Same thing for the general. You can get the app General IELTS Help and then link those two accounts for a really cool connected learning experience. Hi, Madhu. Hi, Tito Pavan. Nice to see uh, more of our members there. Madhu, I see that you have a doubt. Students, if you have a question, a doubt, a concern, send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com. Madhu, send me your question there and I will happily answer it. Okay. All right. Uh, again, you can find our, some of our books on Amazon. If you go to Amazon, search for A Helps Academic Outs or G Helps General Outs, you'll find some of our books there if you like to use paperback versions. And uh, tomorrow uh, we will have a task one class for members. And then uh, the task two that we start today will most likely have to finish it tomorrow. And on Saturday, question and answer for members and then speaking part three for everyone. Let's get into today's writing class so we can uh, move along and uh, plan it out and work towards that high, high band uh, writing response. Again, uh, in order to get those high bands, you need to have clear, accurate answer to the question. You need to have good vocabulary, good grammar, and you need really good structure, content, and cohesion in the essay. All right? So uh, first thing first, always read the question carefully. IELTS task to writing. Some people believe that it is valuable for society to experiment with bacteria and viruses while others feel this is dangerous and should not be done. Discuss both views and give your own opinion. Use examples and explanations from your own knowledge to support your position. So I thought I would give you a quite a provocative uh, topic considering the um, corona outbreak in the world today. So uh, hopefully this will get you a little bit focused and uh, interested to write a good essay. Again, students, sometimes it's a good idea to read the question twice just so you're absolutely clear on what you need to do. Some people believe that it is valuable for society to experiment with bacteria and viruses while others feel this is dangerous and should not be done. Discuss both views and give your own opinion. Explain, use examples and explanations from your own knowledge to support your position. Students, I highly, highly recommend, especially when you're practicing at home, but even during the exam, as your next step, 
to paraphrase this task two question, okay? So uh, make sure to write it down again in your own words. This is not your introduction, okay? You're simply doing this to collect some information and at best you can use the paraphrase to um, have some content for your background information in the introduction. So we'll get there in just a moment. So again, students, in your own words, paraphrase this question for me. So write it down using your own words and of course work hard to be accurate. Make sure that you write the same content. I'm going to do that as well and then we can compare. Hi, Juan Pablo Avila. Welcome to the class. All right. Um, so, of course, paraphrasing helps you to expand your vocabulary as well. Your paraphrase doesn't have to be perfect, it should just be accurate, okay? All right, so there is my paraphrase. And you'll notice it's quite similar to uh, what you just read. Uh, certain individuals ascertain that there's benefits to communities by doing research with microbes like bacteria and viruses, while others, however, feel that this is harmful and must be avoided. Express your thoughts on both sides and give your own perspective. Use your own life references to support your arguments. Okay, so very close to the original. Of course, using a lot of different words to express the same idea. Let's see what some of your peers did for this paraphrase. And some nice fast writing by some students. It's really good. Okay. All right. Uh, Michael Fan says, it is essential to conduct uh, experiments on bacteria and viruses for everyone. However, uh, some people consider this approach is detrimental. All right, Michael Fan, not bad. Couple of corrections. And Michael, always paraphrase the full question. So uh, even this part here, express your thoughts on both sides and give your own perspective. Use your own life references, right? So make sure to include that because that helps you, Michael, to understand the voice and the content of the essay. So especially at home, uh, paraphrase that part, okay? Uh, Roshni says, most people believe that experimenting with bacteria and virus are more beneficial for the community, while others say that this is unhealthy. Discuss both sides. Roshni, very nice paraphrasing. I like the word unhealthy, yeah. Great. Uh, yeah, sometimes you'll see virus as a non-count noun, and sometimes you'll see it as a count noun. So up to you, virus, viruses. Okay, used to be a non-count noun. Nowadays, a lot of people use the count noun, viruses. Uh, Elena Mori says, certain individuals believe that research with bacteria and virus is indispensable for civilization, as where others ascertain that this is risky and this practice 
should be banned. Okay, very nice. Paraphrasing, Elena. I love how everybody has such a unique diction. It means your style of expressing yourself. That's great. And then Elena continues with express the opinion of both sides and take a stand on one. Nicely done, Elena. Elena, I can tell you're studying hard because I can absolutely see the improvement in your uh, language use. That's great. Aftab uh, says some community members think that experimenting with bacteria and viruses is fruitful for society, but others oppose this because it is dangerous and thus should be restricted. Aftab, uh, very good. I did a little bit of tweaking, but overall very good. All right, uh, so far so good, students. Uh, I can see there are some other paraphrases as well. They're looking good. All right, um, so let's continue on. We've done the paraphrasing. Uh, now what do we do? What's my next step? Okay, so my step one was read and paraphrase. And my step two, doing a little condensing here with step one. Uh, what is my step two? What should you always uh, do for step two? Okay, what should you always do for step two? What do you do? Yeah, so Mud who says, well, let's uh, identify the topic. And then Aftab says, well, how about thinking critically? Yeah, Boomi says, identify the topic, the controlling idea, and then um, let's do some critical thinking. So step two, identify the topic and controlling idea or ideas in some cases, right? And then step three will be apply critical thinking to the topic and controlling idea. All right. Uh, so what is the topic? What are we talking about here, students? What does uh, the IELTS ask us to express? And Ahmed, yeah, Ahmed uh, Salmania says brainstorm. That's what we're doing right now is brainstorming. Uh, planning is super, super important for high band scores. I know you only have 40 minutes, but a little bit of planning goes a long way. That's actually a, a saying in English. And I'll share that with you while you're telling me the topic and the controlling idea. So remember this wise proverb in English, a little bit of planning goes a long way. And it's very true for task one, task two writing. Okay, I'm always amazed at students who try to just write right away. Um, so Karen Veer correctly says, Karen, good job, says experimenting on microorganisms basically is what we're talking about. That's really nice, Karen, specifically bacteria and viruses, but yeah, microorganisms, right? Might as well just group them in here. So isms, isms, yeah, all right. So topic, experimenting on microorganisms. Anybody that said that is on the right path, okay? Uh, Garv Tandon, uh, the benefits and effects, that's more the controlling idea, okay? So, uh, and research is, yeah, okay, I Irene Domingo, nice. So research on viruses and bacteria, that's the topic. That's what we're talking about, right? Uh, what's the controlling idea? So what, um, what in regard to experimenting on microorganisms are we really concerned about? Uh, Ftop says the pros and cons of experimenting. Uh, yeah, or another way to say it is to do or not to do. The pros and cons, the benefits and deficits of experimenting on bacteria and viruses. Okay, good. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. So very nice topic, experimenting on microorganisms, controlling idea to do it or not to do it, and the benefits 
and deficits of experimenting on bacteria and viruses. Sure, that's what we want to explore. All right, so step three. And this is the step that a lot of students kind of rush and, or sometimes don't even do. And it's the biggest mistake because this is where the magic happens. This is where you get some ideas that you don't necessarily think of right away. Okay. Uh, a lot of students, a lot of people uh, tend to be over ambitious and think, oh, I have everything in my head. It'll just come and blah, blah. And there it is on the paper. It looks beautiful. Fantastic. I just aced it. Ooh, really? Um, so you want to ask what, why, how. These are your critical thinking questions. So um, what is, this is, and this is your full question. So what is experimenting of microbes? Okay, so what does that actually mean? Can you give me some answers? So what does it mean to experiment on these microorganisms? Yeah, so what does that mean? What are we, what are we really talking about? When you think about this, experiment on microorganisms, okay, so imagine I'm an alien from another planet. Okay, I came from a long ways. We don't do this kind of research. So you have to explain to me what we're doing. Okay. Um, so we identify good ones and bad ones. So identify their genetics and behavior, their effects on humans. Sure. Uh, Mia says, uh, discovering particular traits of microbes. Yeah, I think we're talking about the same there, Mia, with the behaviors. Okay. Sure. Rajveer says, doing tests on viruses. Don't jump, uh, Rajveer, to the why yet, right? Yeah, I think a lot of us are jumping to the why uh, question here. Okay, so identifying their genetics, their behavior, their effects on humans. Okay, I would say uh, an accurate answer to what is experimenting on microbes is setting up laboratories and using special equipment to capture cultivate and identify microbes. So here again, students, remember your power of visualization. Okay. This will help you a lot in your writing task one, writing task two. So we're not talking about why we're experimenting on microbes yet. It's a really important distinction students to separate the what, the why from the how, okay? Oftentimes when I'm teaching students, it seems to me like students are taking the what and the why and their ideas and they're kind of just mixing them all together. But you don't want to do that. You want to be able to discern the what from the why. So this is just a tip, but it's an important tip. <coughs> so keep this in mind, okay? So tip, important tip. Always work hard to separate the what from the why. Okay. And this is where visualization is really helpful. So uh, when we think about the what is experimenting, then you should picture scientists in white lab coats in a laboratory uh, collecting, cultivating, cultivating means they're multiplying these microbes, okay, to try to understand them with certain tools, right? So that's what the what is. All right, uh, now, next question, and I think this one is extremely important to write a good essay here, is why, okay? So why do people experiment 
on bacteria and viruses. Why do we do that? Okay, answer this question for me. And I think if I look at some of your previous answers, like Tural, um, then we start to understand the why. So Tural says to find out more about their effects on other creatures. Sure. Okay. Let's see. Um, Sam says to know about their anatomy and the diseases they cause. Yeah. So to know about their anatomy and know about the illnesses. that they inflict yeah absolutely or illness they inflict uh, let's see um, what else do we have so Nitish says to find out their ability to adapt under different conditions yeah Uh, Roshni is saying how they can be useful for humans. Sure. And for Dob says to make biological weapons. Yeah, that's one as well. And Zebinoso says creating vaccines. Absolutely. To create vaccines and medicines. And also keep this one in mind to develop... biological weaponry right so we use them as weapons as well okay um now these are the ones that come a little bit faster so the what and the why are really the two tricky ones these are the two tricky ones um but the how uh that should be the example so how can this be observed okay and here what you want to think of is examples and I'll show you what I mean with this how. So um, by using um, special equipment like microscopes in university, private, and military labs with scientists such as microbiologists, Uh, in regards to microbes like SARS, coronavirus, um, HIV, to name a few, okay? This is where you start to get your ideas for your examples in your body paragraphs, okay? So how do we do it? This is where you go into a little bit more detail and think about those real-world examples that you've heard of, read about, and so on, okay? I'm really enjoying how a lot of you are typing in these words and picking up this vocabulary. That's fantastic. Okay. Um, so I think we have uh, some good ideas now about the advantages and disadvantages uh, from this brainstorming. Advantages, okay, more knowledge, able to cure illness, right? Disadvantage can be used to injure and kill humans, right? So those are the disadvantages. All right, so uh, now the, as the next step, of course, don't forget this, 
you have to choose a side, right? So step, what is this? we're on step three or four, step four. Uh, choose a side and using your critical thinking, create your direct thesis statement. Okay, bam, 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 bam. Very important, direct thesis statement. So uh, always choose the side that's easiest. Charlie Sen saying bird flu, swine flu, and other ones as well. Absolutely, there's lots of them. Um, okay, so uh, students, uh, what side do we choose? Do we want to choose that uh, it's good to experiment with bacteria and viruses, or do we want to choose the side at the end that says, ah, it's not that good? Okay, so what do we want to choose here? What do we want to choose? You have to discuss both, Natish. That's right. So we will do that. And then it says, choose a side. I'm going to show you how to write this essay, Natish. So don't worry about it. We'll get there. But you have to make sure to pay attention to the full question. So it says, discuss both views and give your own opinion. So um, what do you think? It's good or bad? Okay, Roshni says it's bad. Parmanjit says it's good. Taral says I disagree. Charlie Sen says I, it's a positive. Okay. Um, what do you base your choice on? So always ask yourself, students, what do I base my choice on? So why am I choosing this, right? And I'll explain to you my logic here. So here's my logic. Um, overall, in history, has experimenting with microbes helped humanity or not? So this is the question I would ask myself before choosing. Throughout history, has microbial, microbial experimentation or research benefited or harmed society so this is my question that i ask myself before i decide on this because this will help my logic here okay now if i think about it there's eight billion people on earth and time will tell whether or not that's a good thing but definitely we suffer from illness much less than our forefathers because we have cures. We live longer lives. Um, we're able to live well into our old age because we have medicines and ways of stopping bacteria and viruses that would have killed most of us at a much younger age. Okay, So overall, we can argue that humanity, if we're looking at the sheer numbers of people and the age of people, um, it has benefited greatly from this, right? So I would say research is good because people can live longer, healthier lives, okay? We definitely don't have as many threats as we did in the past. I know a lot of people are scared of the coronavirus these days, but 100, 200 years ago, people were scared of a lot more and they didn't even know what it was. They just saw people dying, okay? So um, that's my thought. I feel that's the side that's going to be the easiest for me to discuss. And now I write my thesis statement. Okay, so for this kind of essay students where you have to discuss both sides, so you have to uh, discuss both sides and then uh, choose the side that you believe in, so give your own opinion. Uh, it's always good to start with the side that you disagree with, okay? So start with the side you disagree with and finish with the side you agree with. All right, that's how you are going to write a quality, high-level, effective essay that is able to convince your reader of your argument. Okay? All right. Um, so here, that's the kind of thesis statement we want to create. Go ahead and write a thesis statement, students. So I want to 
uh, see what kind of thesis statements you come up with, okay? And I'm going to do the same, okay? So, There. So I'm writing a band nine level thesis. You don't have to have the same level of composition, meaning the grammar or vocabulary. As long as you have the same ideas, even in two sentences, you're absolutely okay. All right. You're absolutely okay. Uh, let's see what some of you have. It looks like some of you prepared your thesis a little bit in advance, which is absolutely fine. It shows me that you're preparing for these lessons, which is good. Uh, Mia22 says, from my perspective, research with microorganisms is beneficial due to extending life expectancy and furthering uh, treatment for illnesses in the future. Uh, Mia, that's okay, but remember you have to discuss both views. So one paragraph needs to be about the counter argument, so the argument for the other side. Okay, you need to include that in your thesis when it's this kind of question. Okay, uh, Elena Mori says, although certain individuals argue that experiments with bacteria and viruses are harmful with, with respect to uncertain outcomes, I strongly believe it is a blessing for humans to uh, eliminate epidemics at its core. Okay, Elena, very nice. That could be a band nine level essay going from that thesis. I can tell you've given it much thought. And uh, I can see the structure and content of your essay that I'm going to read from that uh, thesis. So that's really, really good. Okay. All right. Um, for Dob says, although certain individuals deem that tests with bacteria and viruses are detrimental to the community and should be banned, I believe that these experiments are useful for humans as they enhance the medical field and quality of life. Okay, Ferdov, so finish the idea. I know you probably ran out of space, but you're on the right track, so good for you, okay? All right, uh, Madhu Paila says, in my opinion, to know about the virus and bacteria has both benefits and deficits, but I strongly believe that research on microbes has uh, good, has resulted in good, like uh, finding vaccines. Okay, Madhu, careful with that kind of thesis because at this point it feels to me like you don't have a clear path that you're going to follow in your essay and it makes me less interested to read this kind of this is good that is good both are good type of essay so careful with that Madhu it's better to be a little bit more opinionated okay so uh Students, keep this in mind that, and this is a good tip as well. So being opinionated, where should I put this? Maybe here, the thesis, okay? So uh, keep this in mind, students. This is a, an important tip. Um, opinionated essays uh, usually read better and are more interesting than essays which are ambiguous and do not take a clear side, okay? Uh, I'm sure you'll agree with me. If I gave you two essays to read and one of them shows a strong opinion and the other one's kind of like, well, 
this is okay, that is okay. And I ask, which one do you want to read? The one that has an opinion or the one that expresses that both are okay? Mm, probably most people would say, I want to read the one with the opinion because that's more exciting. Okay, that's human nature. So essays with a strong position read better. They score better on the IELTS and they score better in university as well. So keep that in mind. Okay. All right, Charlie says, many individuals believe that experimenting on bacteria and viruses is harmful to society, whereas others believe the opposite. However, I believe it has a positive impact. Um, okay, careful with the however, Charlie, because you're actually agreeing with the last part of your statement, the whereas others believe the opposite. Uh, so do I. There are positive effects on society, which include, okay, so careful with that opposition there, Charlie. It's a, it's a bit confusing. All right, Komalpreet Kaur says, although some people believe it is dangerous to experiment with bacteria and viruses as it may result in an epidemic, I believe these experiments increase the chances of life. Very good, Komalpreet. Don't use contraction. So for essays, especially task two, it is, not it's, okay? Uh, and uh, careful with wordiness. To do experiments, just to experiment. Okay, so careful with wordiness. All right, looking good, students, looking good. So again, uh, here is my thesis statement. Many people feel that research on bacteria and viruses should be banned as it is dangerous to human life. However, others, including myself, believe that such experiments increase longevity and improve health. So I have one clear point for my body paragraph one, dangerous to human life, okay? And that I can uh, state as the epidemic, for example. And then here, however, others, including myself, believe that such experiments increase longevity and improve health. Now, if I'm a very fast writer and I can write 300, 350 words, in the 40 minutes, band eight, band nine level students can do that, many of them, okay? So band nine level student can write 350 words in 40 minutes. How do I know that? I've seen it, first of all. Uh, secondly, if you take TOEFL, the minimum words for the high level students is 300, okay? IELTS, the minimum is 250 minimum, that means you should go more than 250 for high marks. For TOEFL, the minimum is 300 for the same essay question. Okay, so keep that in mind. Uh, a high level student can write 350 in the 40 minutes. For those of you who are going into university, you need to reach that speed, okay? So here, I can do body paragraph two on this altogether, or if I'm a fast writer, and I'm confident, I could do even one body paragraph here and another one here. So one body paragraph, two about increasing longevity, and three about improving health. It's possible, okay? We're not going to do that today, but you could do that, all right? Okay, students, so let's uh, continue on with the introduction. All right, uh, can anybody tell me what you need to include in a high quality introductory paragraph? So what should be included in a high quality introductory paragraph? Okay, let me know. Let's see how many of you have been practicing and paying attention in previous classes. So introduction should have. I Alvis says it should have a hook. Absolutely, especially for this kind of a question. Should have a hook. Should have a background. That's right, Elena and Booby. And it should have your thesis. Yeah, that's your standard introductory paragraph. I know that IELTS courses and IELTS teachers say all kinds of information for the introductory paragraph. But if you're looking for a band seven, to a band nine, and I know a lot of our students who are successful on the exam know this, uh, you need to have a standard introductory paragraph for this kind of essay, which means hook, 
background thesis. I don't care what other teachers say about this. If you go to university, if you go to college, you ask your professor, your instructor, they will tell you the same. They will say a good introduction has a hook, background, thesis. That's it. Okay, you need those three. So hook, background, plus direct thesis. Uh, I keep saying direct thesis, students, because often I see people writing um, this essay will discuss the advantages and disadvantages. No, no, no. Okay, please don't write what you will discuss in a 300-word essay. It's too short. Just write it. Okay, just write the direct thesis. All right. Uh, Preeti called it the accurate thesis. That's a good way to say it too. Preeti, it's, it's literally, technically, it's called a direct thesis. Okay, so there's direct thesis and there's indirect thesis. For your IELTS essay, task two, use a direct thesis. Really important. Okay, all right, give me some hooks, students. So give me a hook. Hook should be an interesting, an interesting statement fact to catch your reader's attentions and introduce the topic okay so <clears throat> introduce introduce i don't know why it's doing that but anyway um all right so uh give me a hook what would be a good hook uh let's see i can see some coming up there uh, Karen looks very long Karen but let's see what you have so Karen says millions of people worldwide uh, get ill due to microorganisms either from the consumption of contaminated food or coming in contact with the infected all right Karen um, remember the topic Karen the topic here is research on microbes so uh, students when you're writing your hook uh, try to really focus on the topic and you know the topic because you have it from the brainstorming, right? It's research on microbes, okay? Uh, Ferdov says, these days people live longer and healthier due to experiments on. Mm, Ferdov, that's your thesis. Students, don't mix your thesis and your hook. It's not good, okay? Topic is research and experiments on microbes, specifically bacteria and viruses. That's your topic. Introduce it with an interesting statement. Try again, Karen. Try again for Dobbs. I want to see it. Okay. Aftab says, in the 21st century, many diseases are introduced by different microorganisms. Mm, there's a bit of a logical flaw there, Aftab. If you ask a professor, they'll say, oh, there's a little bit of a logical error there. Chabi, good to see you in this class. I love how you keep coming back. Can't get enough. It's great even though you've passed your exam. Uh, that's great. So Chabi says, in a fast-developing world, scientists opt to enhance human abilities biologically. I think that's a little too ambitious, Chabi. You're not completely off, but you're a little bit too ambitious with that, I think. Rajveer says, nowadays, humans are exposed to millions of viruses and bacteria every day. Well, I don't think that's true, Rajveer. I think humans have been exposed to millions of viruses and bacteria every day ever since the dawn of time. It's not just nowadays. Um, let's stick to the topic here. Michael Fan says, humans have been dealing with viruses and bacteria for thousands of years. Yes, Michael, but in what capacity, right? I still don't see a very accurate hook, students. It seems simple, but you really want to think it through. Okay, um... Nice. Okay, now I see a couple. So there's Roshni. Roshni says, uh, playing with microorganisms in the laboratory has become common these days. Don't say benefit society, uh, Roshni, because we don't know that yet. If you're talking about a weapons, bioweapons laboratory, probably not for benefit. Okay. Uh, Elena says, experiment with virus and bacteria is a pivotal part of making life better and diseases less harmful. Uh, Elaine, a few mistakes there. Again, hook, keep it simple. All right, uh, Sam, not bad. These days, uh, there's heavy business in the world. 
uh, to do research on microbes. Sam, don't forget key elements. Students, here's a hook, okay? Keep it simple. When I show it to you, you're gonna go, oh, why didn't I, why didn't I write that? Um, so, over the past century, humanity has spent billions of dollars to research viruses and bacteria. Okay, so what is our topic? Our topic is research on virus and bacteria. Show the examiner, show the marker that you've identified the topic and feed them an interesting statement. So humans, we've developed our science, especially for microorganisms, roughly in the last hundred years. And ever since then, we've been spending oodles and oodles of money for these laboratories at universities, in the private sector, in the medical sector. So over the past century, humanity has spent billions of dollars to research viruses and bacteria. That's it. Okay, that's all you need for the hook. Your reader will be interested in what you have to say. Does that make sense? So don't overcomplicate the hook, students. The hook is where you set the mood for the examiner that you can write in English, you know what you're doing, and you can create sentences without mistakes, especially if it's simple, okay? All right, so that's your hook. Over the past century, when you start with a uh, time expression, you should have a comma. Humanity has spent billions of dollars to research viruses and bacteria, okay? All right, now we go to the background, okay? So uh, background means the definition Okay, so definition plus importance. Okay, so your background's really just two sentences that define what you're talking about and why you're talking about it. So what are you writing in this essay really and why are you writing it? And again, it's not rocket science because if you did the brainstorming, you already have this information, okay? We have it here. Remember step three? Apply critical thinking to the topic controlling ideas. So what is experiments on microbes? It's humans in laboratories using special equipment to capture, cultivate, and identify microbes. So that's all I'm going to do. I can literally take, if I've done good brainstorming, I can literally take my sentence here and I can almost copy paste it in for my definition for the background. So um, in hospitals, universities, and military installations, So notice I'm just going to adjust it a little bit and it'll make sense. Uh, people have set up laboratories and use special equipment to capture, cultivate, and identify microbes around the world. Okay, so that's my definition. That's my definition. Uh, Rajveer says, medical experts experiment on microorganisms in labs to capture, cultivate, and identify them, okay, and their behaviors. Good, Rajveer. Yeah, very nice. All right. 
Uh, I. Alves is asking a good question. How many words should I write in the introduction? Uh, it depends on the question, Alves, and on your style, but the introduction can be as many as 70 words, okay? There's no rule. This is another interesting point, Alves. I see this all the time. Like students say, oh, but the introduction's too long. I think a good introduction is often long. There is no rule uh, for essay writing that the introduction has to be short. I'm not sure where students are getting that from, but there is no such rule, okay? Uh, sometimes when you read papers, especially in university, you'll realize that the longest paragraph is the introduction, okay? Some introductions need extra work to uh, define and explain what we're writing about. So. Uh, this isn't very long at all because I have explanations in here, okay? So here's my background so far. In hospitals, universities, and military installations around the world, people have set up laboratories and used special equipment to capture, cultivate, and identify microbes. All right, and then why is it important? So this research has a major impact on the lives of all people, okay? It's very rare that I use a superlative like all, but arguably it has an impact, in this case, on the life of every single living human being, okay? So that's the importance. And now all I do is take my thesis statement and plug it in, okay? So when you're practicing at home, these are the steps that you need to go through to end up with your band nine thesis. Watch, or band nine introduction, I should say, okay? So read with me, okay? And let's see if you agree that you would say, okay, this is a quality response or start to this essay. Here we go. Uh, read with me. Over the past century, Humanity has spent billions of dollars to research viruses and bacteria in hospitals, universities, and military installations around the world. People have set up laboratories and used special equipment to capture, cultivate, and identify microbes. This research has a major impact on the lives of all people. Many people feel, let's change people so it's not redundant. Okay, make these corrections at home too. Many individuals feel that research on bacteria and viruses should be banned as it is dangerous to human life. However, others, including myself, believe that such experiments increase longevity, longevity and improve health. Okay, so that is your introductory paragraph. Mustak, your thesis is your position and direction in the essay. It's the last sentence, usually, of your introductory paragraph. Okay, students, does that introductory paragraph ring well? So does that sound like, okay, I see what's going on. Now body paragraph one will be about danger to humanity. Body paragraph two, maybe three, will be about its positives increasing longevity and improving health. I see what this person is writing about even without reading the question, okay? That's how you know your introductory essay or your, sorry, your introductory paragraph is well written is it doesn't need the question to be clear, okay? It doesn't need the question to be clear. All right, students, so uh, another good practice to do once you have your introductory paragraph is read the original question and then read your introductory paragraph again. So read the question, read the introductory paragraph, make sure that the two are closely related and they make sense, okay? Uh, students, tomorrow we will continue with body paragraph one, two, and the conclusion, that's it for today. So today was understanding the question, effective planning, and writing that band nine introduction. Tomorrow, we're going to continue with elaborating and expanding in body paragraph one, two, 
and writing an effective conclusion so that you can really get those high band scores. All right, keep it up. Practice, prepare for tomorrow, okay? All right, everyone, make sure to check us out at aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Use the code R4TYJ to get that 20% discount. And for general IELTS, check us out at gieltshelp.com. Lots and lots of help for you there. Uh, make sure to use those websites daily and maximize your score. Much love to all of you from the heart of Europe, Budapest. Bye for now.